and creating that in your own and we're not trying to do that so i like to kind of use that as a reference and then create my own like that but i'm gonna use the tip instead of the brush part on this one if i can get it open there it go all right so i am making lines so we're gonna make these little lines I made a little gray so I could have a little bit of color in the background. Uh-oh. Canvas is sliding away. It's running away from me. But anyway, um, go back here. So we're going to make these little lines. Kind of make it a little darker here. And make it a little bit here. And I'm sorry, I am not the best with the camera thing. So please forgive me. Um, I am doing my best on this. Until I get some beautiful equipment like most of y'all YouTubers have, <laughs> then I can do that. For right now, I'm using what I have here. Okay? All right. Uh oh. And then let me see if I can get my paintbrush. This is what the paintbrush come in play wise. It's wet. See if it can be able to smear it. See how it's smearing? So, this is reason what the paintbrush is for. To kind of give a, a little shadow to it. See how it, how it's working? Do it while it's wet. Don't do it while it's um, super dry because it's not going to do anything. So we give a little shadow. See how it's a little shadow? Sort of like that. Perfect. So if you see here, it's almost sort of like that. Okay, perfect. Now... You can see some little brown on the top of this bird nose to give some type of color to it. So I'm going to use a, a lighter brown. And it's, again, I am using this as a reference for me. So I'm just going to use a little brown here. Give some shadow to it, even though the beak may not be brown, but we're using it as a shadow going back again with your brush why is this wet here we're gonna blend some of this stuff so we're blending even though i'm sorry we're blending here a little bit of blending going action going here all right so I do have here, with my uh, markers here, they're like clear markers and it helps also blend into, like a blending tool. So I'm going to use this one. See how it, and then it blends? So we're going to use this tool is to blend it out. So I'm trying to blend, see how it's blending? We're going to blend this out here. So we don't want brown to be too harsh I am blending this color out just a little bit more and blending into that gray that black there though but that's okay give a little shadow foreshadow in there as you can see I'm gonna move it up closer see how it's working all right I'm put it closer I was blending. So we're gonna keep blending. Let's see if I can wipe this off. I'm gonna use a side of my table here. And then we're gonna keep blending this color down. So this is what I'm using. It's a blending tool of a of the markers that's in that set. So it can help you blend that stuff, bring the colors down. So I'm wanting to see how the color of that beak. So it's almost looking like, if you can really see how it's blended there, we're blending it here. See how that works? Okay. And we're going to use these back and forth so we can have some color and texture to it. So since that was a little dark at the top, we're going to use the next little color. I think I'm going to use is this color to bring the color a little bit down. And then we're gonna make the like a like a little nostril for that uh, bird's beak, okay? So if I open this beautiful thing up, same technique. We're gonna go right on this side. 
Blend this down. See how this goes? Yes. I'm going to blend it. Blend it down. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of color here, but we're gonna I'm going to show you how to work that color. Remember that other marker? We're going to use it while it's wet. So the better it is when you're doing it while the markers are wet, you know, it's easier to blend all these colors in. All right, so now that we did this, it looks looks crazy though, but it's a method to this science, okay? It's a method. So we're going to get this blending clear tool again. Why is this wet? So we blended, pushing these colors out. See how it's pushing the colors out? We're pushing these beautiful colors out. And we're going to pull these colors out all the way out. So we're going to go really carefully on this one. Pull it down. We're going to push these colors out. And then we're going to get our paintbrush. We're going to blend those colors even further. So I'm, I'm pushing all these colors out. See how am I pushing them? Pushing the colors all the way out. And also give the, the beak some dimension so it won't be look like one solid color. So I'm taking this paintbrush. It's a different paintbrush though. And it's dry. These are dry brushes. These are not wet. So don't have it wet. We're not going to have these wet. And see how the colors are blending. We're blending these colors in. Beautiful. Now see, look how that's beautifully made. So if you look here, it's blending. We got our own interpretation of blending. It's almost giving them an illusion of um, watercolors, but it's not watercolors, okay? So I'm gonna use this tool just a little bit on the side just to kind of pull some of these other colors over. And uh, I'm sorry, pull some of these colors over, even some of here. All right, all right, I'm gonna put this back up. Sorry. All right, so now, now that we've done that, we're gonna get the darker brown to make the, the nostril of our parrot. But after you finish with these brushes and stuff, please clean them just like you normally do if you did it with paint. But um, right now, keep them dry. If it have a little color, sometimes it give a little texture to your painting um, if it's dry. So when, when it's dry, well, it's more like a blending too, I should say. And as you can see, see how well those marker works. Now we're gonna do the little nose. I'm gonna move it close, see how my reference here. We're gonna do the same exact thing on his beak, okay? So I like that. All right, and see here? Something like that. Not perfect, okay? All right. Really, really good. So far, so good. Right, can get some of these marks back in here. So now, now that we got that, we're going to do more touch-ups on the beak and everything so to bring it to life a little bit, okay? Um, so, you know, the outline of the lips and, you know, the, the beak and everything. So, as you can see here, they got little highlights here. Like I said, we're going to do multiple references on this thing to create our own, okay? So, this one we're going to use, we're going to do around the beak part of it. Um, I'm going to use my little white. Hopefully, this will work with my white. Perfect. It's coming through. And then we're going to, you know, on the line, the lining of this beak. See how well we're doing this? 
to give some de definition of where this beak is ending and then where it stops, okay? Okay. And then we're going to do some little textures on here on the side of his beak. Give little textures to it. All right. And then we're going to outline this top part of his beak. Just drawing a line down. Oh no, so tie this mark pen marker. Then I have like other little textures. All right, so far so good. All right, now, now that we did that, we can start working on our feathers. So um, as you can see, I am already has pre-started some of it, like for is the, the actual feathers. So I'm using a red marker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna minimize my picture. I'm using this as a reference, as you can see. As again, I'm using this as a reference, okay? And our bird is a little slightly different, so we're gonna be doing a little different for my bird. So this one here, I'm um, we're gonna do the top part of the bird hair, and then we're gonna work it down. So If you can see, I am, his head is like kind of flat a little bit. So I'm, uh, all I'm doing is pulling strokes. It's not, I'm not coloring in, I'm stroking it down. So it can be smooth. So I'm turning this canvas slightly over to the side. I am going to draw a slight line so I can stop where I'm at, okay? And then I'm just stroking the, 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 the brush, the tip of the brush, look like this, just stroking it down. And then of course, we're going to go back in there with definition of colors to make this dark and give them stuff like that. So we have to do definition. Definition and highlights and low lights and um, help brings the painting out, you know, bring the picture out and you can see the picture a little bit differently and stuff like that. So that's what that's for. So all I'm doing is stroking it back, giving effects of feathers, you know, like his feathers coming out of his head though. You, of course you can color it in, but I just like to do the strokes, okay? All right, so we're gonna bring this picture down and always keep checking your reference. Your reference is your always your best bet, uh, making sure that you know your picture is you know the way you want it and everything. So pretty much from his head all the way down, just about right here is is gonna be a different color. So we're working down onto his body. I'm just going to keep working at it. I'm sorry. It's, um, like I said, um, I'm not perfect with these things. So please forgive me. So don't kill me on how I'm doing this. Okay. So. Go back to the front of his beak, getting a darkest, even though it's pink. Hey, that's okay. We're gonna use what we have 
and then we're going to make some some adjustments on the front of it give them some definition If you can see it close to it, some definition. This is the most, I think these are the most beautiful birds that God ever made. But of course, he have a lot of birds. But these are like just so colorful, so vibrant. And is uh, and they create, you know, what he created. Just like you, you are uniquely made by him. Okay. And then we're going to go underneath the neck. Because, like, remember, it's, like, dark. Like, pretend like these are, like, the how the sun is hitting his neck. So, we're going to go underneath it. Bring the, these down. Pretend that all of this is dark. All right. See how, how look how the difference of it. Does that make really good so far? All right. And we're going to keep going at it. We're going to keep going at this for some times. And like I said, you don't have to, like I said before, a lot of these supplies that I use, I don't, I don't spend a lot, you know, um, I can just tell you a little bit poor. So when I was younger and stuff, you know, you know, a single parent home. My mom was trying to take care of all of us, you know, me and my sister and brother, you know, and she didn't have a lot, you know, she didn't have a lot. So you make what's due, polite that you make what's due. And I, I will tell her in her face and her behind her back, God bless her soul. She already had passed away though, but, um, she is a remarkable woman, a remarkable woman. And I will tell her in her face, behind her back. I mean, she was remarkable. And she took care of us. You know, sometimes I like ask myself, how did she do it? You know, for three kids and feeding them. And, and she was telling it too. Like her work uh, blows minds, minds away. Okay. She was an art. She was an artist in a different way. She was an artist in seamstress. So her seamstress work of art, you know, creating beautiful clothing and doing stuff for church choirs and weddings and you know singers you know that's that's you know was in part of different groups and stuff she did that okay she did that and like i said her work you know her work speaks for herself it was volume to the point that people you know from everywhere was coming to her and allow her creativity to spill out you know and i took up on that part you know i took up on her her ways of doing stuff, certain things and stuff like that. But I took upon the artistic part of it all. Of course, she drew hers out, you know, and I saw some of her artwork, but I love the part of recreating something and created this one. I use this as an outlet, you know, like I said before, an outlet of de-stressing, an outlet, you know, if I'm feeling angry or anxious about something, this is what I use. And, um, this was a way of a coping mechanism for myself. You know, um, no one else had to use it, but I did it as a coping mechanism for me um, to make me feel good by myself, um, to, you know, reassure myself that, you know, everything is okay. And then I could put my feelings on here. If I'm angry, I can create something evil or something like that. If I'm happy, you see me drawing something, you know, exciting, um, if I'm just want to just do something like this, this is what I do here. I'm just doing something because I want to, and also a stress reliever, you know, so you don't have to, you know, like I said, if you, you know, not an artist or something like that, and you want to try these out, please be my guest. I want to see your work. I want to see your work and, and watch what happens and your mind will go to a different level in space. I call it level in space. In another dimension to me personally, in that your focus is not on the focus that you was, was thinking about or you're stressing about. Yes, the problem will be there. But I'm letting you know, problems don't last long. The storm, don't, it's just like a storm. A storm don't last long. Of course, it'll rain hard, might corrupt a lot of stuff. But guess what? That storm will be over soon and it does not last long. And that's a good thing about it. It does not last long. And... This is the same thing, but while you in it, you know, 
sometimes you're into positions in your life, you know, to as a lesson learned, a lesson tool, or to understand. And then some of them are just right, right doggone wrong. I'm just saying, you know, if it's family members or friends that you entrusted in them, you know, you learn from that, you walk away from that, you just know that you're not going to never be around and associate with that, you know. And these are just my opinions, okay? But I just learned that for me, for me to have a, a coping mechanism, this is my way of coping things, um, you know, doing painting like this. All right, we're going to stop here from now. Um, try not to hold this. This is 23.52 seconds. I um, want to stop here for now. I'm going to start this over again. We have a part three. And we're going to keep doing this until we are completed with this painting. Um, again, thank you all so much for just being a part of the Friendly Art team. Um, and I hope you all really enjoy this. Um I'm enjoying it. Just starting it off. I had to start off somewhere. You know, God said, if if you make one step, I make two or three steps. And that's what I'm doing. I'm making this one step. And I pray that this is something that anybody else can be able to help out or, you know, a stress reliever or just enjoying the, the drawing and painting that I am creating. Um, this is fun to me. Like I said, it's a mechanism for the de-stressor. And I hope it's a de-stressor for you. If you want to be able to do something like this for the next time i will make sure i have everything posted on the bottom of the description box going forward right now just as a trial run just to see if anybody would like to try this out um going for my future one this the, uh, after this one if we do the next project i will make sure i have the materials and everything in that description box before we i post this up so you can be prepared and have everything ready as well um, again, I appreciate y'all guys for even just being listening to me. If you are listening, thank you so much. If you want to subscribe, thank you so much. I'm going to try my best, my truly best to post this up on Friday nights and Saturdays. Um, nights, not Sunday. Sundays is my church day. That's why I go praise hallelujah time, my prayer moment and going to church and fellowship. But, um, I hope y'all have a beautiful day and I'm going to turn this camera around. And I'm just want to tell you, may God bless you in every step that you take. Do not let nobody be bothering you. God love you in every way and possible. Okay. Y'all be blessed. Love you.